Today I'm making strawberry jam. I already pre-picked all these strawberries. This is about four quarts. You don't need nearly that much, only maybe about two quarts. I'm hauling them and I'm quartering these strawberries. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna mush these up like this. They don't have to be very small pieces, but you just wanna mush them a little bit with a potato musher. I got this liquid pectin. Directions on how to make the jelly. In this case, we're making jam. The difference between jelly and jam is fruit and jam is the whole. So we're not gonna strain this. We're gonna leave the seeds in. Right now, I'm just squeezing one lemon, about a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. If the lemon feels firm before you cut it, roll it while it's still whole before you cut it, and then you'll get a lot more juice to roll out. And what's great about this little contraption is that it's catching all the seeds. The lemon juice is important to add because it's what's going to keep the bright red color of the strawberry. If you don't add the lemon, your jam is going to turn brown. You're going to want to pre-wash all of your jams and jars. I've already preheated my uh, canister. And that's important because it takes a really, really long time for the water to boil. So I'm about to add seven cups of sugar to the jam. I also always like to pre-measure the sugar before I dump it in because in seasons past I've counted one, you know, two, three cups and then by like four, five, six, seven cups, you can possibly lose count since it's so much work. It's worth taking the time to do everything before. Now I'm adding the pectin, which I bought the liquid kind, um, just because it was cheaper. Now I want to make sure that it comes to a rolling boil. You don't ever want to walk away because the second that you walk away, it will most certainly boil over. And I just have to say that it happens to me almost every single season. And I think, oh, I'm just going to throw this quick load of washing. It's a terrible idea, don't do it. I just wanted to show you mistakes that I've made so you don't make them. This jelly, you can see, is really, really liquidy. If you don't check the expiration date on your pectin, it might be expired. The other mistake that you can make is using overripe fruit. To do that, you're gonna have really super hard jelly that looks like this. Even though you think it looks really good and you'll just cut around the bad parts, don't do it. It might be cheaper. Don't do it. Go for the fresh stuff because that's a lot of work to get yucky GM. So I have the pot rolling boil. Really, really important. And then I've already had my canister in here. You can see that I almost have it to a rolling boil. When you see this like foam stuff, you can just ladle it off. They say that if you use a little bit of butter, it helps get rid of some of this foamy stuff. At any grocery store, you're going to find one of these kits. This is just going to help keep the mess down when you're pouring the hot jam into the jar. These are going to save your fingers when you're pulling out the hot lids. And we're ready to do some canning. The jam is rolling. You can see that I already have the jars boiling. Next, I'm going to be pouring in the hot jam into the bottles. Now I'm ready to stick my super hot jams into the water bath. I'm going to want to let these sit for about 10 minutes in the hot water and then we're going to pull them back out again and then just let them sit for about a week in a dark spot and just kind of let the jam set. This is the end product. This is what they look like when they're done. You can tell that these are done because they don't have the flippy sound. Kelly's jam. Jammin'. These are jams. 